Do not slander a servant to his master, lest he curse you, and you be held guilty. Well, this is the first part of our study here in Proverbs chapter 30, 10 through 14. Last time we looked at the introduction to what we're going to be looking at, and now we're going to jump right into the passage. So, chapter 30, verse 10 is what we're going to look at uh, today. And it says, do not slander a servant to his master. It's a warning against slander, right? Do not speak evil or lie to the master about the servant. It's pretty straightforward. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 1 that those with an ungodly, debased mind are slanderers. Those who are fools in morality toward God, those who are haters of God, not, not fearers of the Lord, are those who are slanderers. And um, so they fall into that list of those who will not inherit the kingdom. They fall into the list of those who um, are outside the grace of God. And so a person who is just constantly slandering, that's all they do, uh, is one whose life is pointing to the fact that they don't believe in the Lord. So Christians cannot do this. Christians cannot be slanderers. If you're a slanderer, you're not a Christian. Because your heart, your lifestyle is betraying the fact that your heart has not been changed. So, that's just the truth. And uh, likewise, Peter also commands, put away all malice and all deceit and, and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. It's First Peter 2.1. So it's why, unwise to speak ill of someone, especially if it's undeserved. That's what slandering is, right? They don't deserve to be spoken ill of, and so then you just keep bashing them. You keep talking bad about them, even though there's really nothing wrong with them. And they're not doing evil, at least that you know of, not that you're calling out. And so you just keep throwing mud at them. You're a mudslinger, right? That's what a slanderer is. And uh, and so the people that are like that have have evidence to the fact that they're not Christians. So if you ever have a Christian mudslinger, then you, you can say, well, dude, are you really a believer or not? Because I don't see that that's the case. You're not really living up to... Uh, what a Christian is supposed to be. And Peter tells us to put away that slandering. If you slander, you can have the evil reflected back to you. This is the warning that's in the proverb. If you're going to slander, it could come back to you. Those who are engaged in this kind of activity will usually have it thrown back on them. And you're going to throw mud when someone else is throwing mud on you. Or the evil that you're intending will come back to you. Now here, to curse means to wish evil will be done to another or to do evil to another. And so he said, that's, what the, uh, that's what the proverb says here. Uh, do not slander a servant to his master, lest he curse you and you be held guilty. So here you are talking badly about the servant to his master, and then he'll curse you. He'll, he'll speak evil about you. He'll wish evil done to you. And then, uh, and then you'll be held guilty. Then you're the guilty one. Now, you're, you're throwing slander against uh, the servant because you want that servant to be guilty. That's the only reason why you throw um, shade against people is because you want them to be in the wrong. You want to be right that you want them to be wrong. That's why you're slander. But here you have the idea that, that if you do that, then it might they might very well just turn the evil about against you. you know, eventually you might run into some a servant that will be like, mm, I don't think so, buddy. And then they'll slander you or they'll curse you and bring evil against you. So the, the wisdom in this passage would say, uh, don't do that. <laughs> don't engage in that, right? What's the problem with speaking slander? Well, you will be held guilty. You thought you would get the servant in trouble, but now you're the one in trouble. See, that that's you're trying to get the servant in trouble with his master. And slandering him, but now you're the one who's busted. Now you're the one who has evil falling upon you. And that was your intention all along. So wisdom tells us not to fall into this trap. Romans twelve seventeen says, Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. So don't slander is what Paul's saying. Don't do evil against evil. Don't slander. If someone even if that person is wrong, even that person is just a despicable servant, is horrible, don't slander that person. Uh, even if you're pointing out evil, you still have to be careful when you're doing that. Especially if you're trying to repay evil for evil. right? Maybe that, that servant is just a horrible person. Maybe you're a fellow servant, and they're just coming after you, always attacking you, 
always slandering you. You're not supposed to slander that person back. You don't repay evil for evil, right? You turn the other cheek when someone's doing evil against you. You, you don't turn, return evil back against them. You don't have to do evil against them. Now, can you call them out, rebuke them, correct them, bring them before the civil magistrates? Absolutely. And you probably should. But you don't turn evil back for evil. If they strike you on the cheek, you don't go and say, okay, I'm going to get this dude back. I'm going to strike him when he's not paying attention. Are you going to steal my stuff? I'm going to go back and steal your stuff. You know, that's that re, that, you know, tit for tat kind of thing. That's not how Christians are supposed to act. We're not supposed to fall into that trap because it is a trap. People fall into that all the time. That retaliate, real retaliatory, retaliatory, I can't even say the word, retaliation. Let me say it that way. Retaliation is not something that we should do. Um, you know, there's, there's correction and rebuke, which is not retaliation. Uh, so, yeah, the person shouldn't be doing, they should have consequences for what they do, but it's not evil doing evil. Sometimes the good that you repay evil for is actually bringing them before the, you know, the law and saying, hey, this person has committed this grievous sin, this grievous crime. Now, please show justice. Um, please be just in what you're doing. And that's right and good. Um, justice is supposed to be done by people on this planet. Uh, God expects us to do justice. He expects the government to do justice. Uh, that is the expectation. That is the command. It's only rebellion if we do not do it. And so we must do it, and we must use that. Um, and we should. That's right. That's good. And so here we understand slandering someone is an evil in and of itself. Do not slander the slave to his master. Or you're going to get it back at you. So don't repay evil for evil, but repay evil with good. Whatever that good is, whatever the best good is, it's not always, it's not letting people go, though. That's not mercy, that's injustice. Um, you got to be careful with that, too, because people get confused with mercy and injustice, and there's two different things. Mercy is not contrary to justice. Justice and mercy walk hand in hand. Mer mercy doesn't just let people get off scot-free. Uh, because that would be unjust. Mercy says, I'll let someone else pay for it. I'll let someone else take the blame. But someone's got to take the blame because that's justice. So mercy doesn't say, well, let's just hide this over. Let's just cover this over and pretend that it didn't happen. Right? Because someone had to pay for it. Someone had to pay for that sin. And so we have to be careful that we don't confuse mercy and injustice. And uh, so think about that. That's that's a big one. That's a big thing to get right in your mind. Uh, it's it's Sometimes it's hard for us to figure that out, but it's true. We need to figure it out. So that's the end of our study for this week. Come back next, or not this week. <laughs> we're just getting started. That's the study for today. Now, come back next time. We're going to look at the four generations coming up here. We're going to look at all four next week, and then we'll have the conclusion. Uh, this I, I only talk about weeks. The, tomorrow we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the four generations that we find here in the, in the rest of the passage that we got before us this week. Now we're talking right. So come back for that.